Hi everybody. Welcome. It's 8 p.m. and Monday night. So that means it's time for Stampin' with Denise. Welcome. I'm so glad you're all here. You could join me. It's good to see you. Hope you had a nice weekend and those of you in the U.S. Hope you had a nice Mother's Day. I did. It was quiet, so that's good. I don't know if anybody else any other country celebrate Mother's Day the same time we do. Whoops, there we go. Now I'm on the right view. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so, um, yeah, I'm not sure if other countries celebrate the same time we do or not. I'm not real sure. But uh, thank you for joining tonight. And let me pull this up here on my computer. And share this. So, okay. Okay, I guess we are ready to go. If you're joining, um, welcome. If you like what you see, I'd appreciate if you share and share down below in the comments. And um, I might send you the card I'm working on to, that I'm going to show you how to do tonight. So, if you recall last week, I made this really cute, well, I think it's cute, card. Um, it's kind of an odd, a different, odd's not the right word, a different kind of fold. But I thought it was really cute and unusual and unexpected. And it was a lot easier than it looks like. But you can have all your friends fooled to think it was really a tough one. But this card's going to go to Jessica Williams. So, Jessica, I will get that out in the mail for you tomorrow. Okay? So, I am going to go ahead now and change my view down back down to my hands. And we will get started on tonight's card. Okay, let's see where we're at go hello hello so yesterday I was visiting another demonstrators website and someone had sent her this card and I'm like I have to go I have to figure out how to find that I love or how to make that I love this kite fold card isn't that cute um, now I just put it on a piece of cardstock that is our normal size. What is that? Like four and a quarter by five and a half. I mean, but you could put it on a regular card base, you know, so that they then open it up and, you know, look inside. But you know what? I really thought that this was enough that this worked too. So I did one in the pansy paper and then I decided to do one for the guys because I thought you know guys will fly kites too so and then I put a little piece of velcro I cut little velcro circles in half put them on there just to hold it down because otherwise you know it doesn't because of the folds it doesn't lay real flat but um, I think they're really cute and I thought I'd show you how to make those so let's get started here. Let me get my notes so that I make sure I have everything right. So this is this is the piece that's gonna make the kite. And it is four inches wide by 10 inches long, okay? And we're gonna start out on the two ends. Again, like I said, this is four inches wide. So we're gonna make a, take a pencil and I'm gonna make this a little darker than normal, so hopefully you can see it. I'm gonna make a mark there at two inches. So this is smack and dab in the middle, and two inches here, okay? And so I, I don't know if you can see that, kind of see it. Okay, so then on the long side, I'll go ahead and put this over here. We're gonna make a mark three inches from each side. So three inches here and three inches there. You're gonna go, gosh, that was easy. Once you figure out how really simple this is. One, two, three, and one, two, three. Okay, so 
So on this piece of cardstock, we have I have a pencil mark that's three inches from this side, three inches from this side, whoops, three inches from here, and three inches from here. And then on each end, you know, this side's four inches, so there's a mark at two inches on both sides, okay? So we're gonna get our um, cutting and scoring board out. And normally, the person whose video I watched, she cut first, but you know what? I'm going to score first, and I'll explain why as we go along. So I'm gonna make sure my blade stays out of the way, because if I lose track, I've been known to cut pieces. So the, the first score line we're gonna make is right in, the, right in the middle, and that's at five inches, okay? Okay, then, Okay, remember I have a mark here and a mark here. These are three inches in. We're gonna line those up right, those little marks right in the groove of this cutter. And then that is, we're gonna score that line, okay? So you put it right in that groove. And then we go around and do the same thing. Like I said, the person whose video I watched, she cut first, but I did that and I had some issues with it being, you know, setting up straight or being equal. And I don't know if that was my scoring or what, but oh, let me get my bone folder. So we're going to now score and burnish. We're going to fold on all of these score lines. And I would say go ahead and just fold. Um, going both ways. Okay, so you've got three score lines right now that you're going to fold and burnish. So then we're going to go this way and fold it the back this way and burnish. So, okay. So now we have this. So what we're gonna do is kind of fold these sides in and put it down like this, as you can see. And it is, it's even, and I know it's even. So then I can push this down. See, what I was having come happen was when I was um, cutting first, then my kite didn't line up. This way I can cut both sides at one time and I know they're going to match. Okay, So then you're going to open this up and you're going to burnish that inside fold. So I don't know if you can see it right there. We're going to just burnish that one and then we're going to burnish that one. Okay. And there you are, that's that. Okay, I'm gonna bring this, the cutter back. And we are going to cut both pieces at one time, then that way I know they are even. What I was having to do was they were, were quite off, so I was having to kind of trim it by hand. And I decided that this, I mean, you're welcome to do either way you want. So now, remember this is the line where we this is the three inches in. You're gonna put that in the groove there, in the channel, and this is the two inches. And then you're going to do just like you did with the scoring except cut. So let's see, there we go. And then we're gonna flip it around the other way and do the very same thing. Okay, hang on. All of a sudden I lost my, okay, we're gonna go like this though. All of a sudden I lost my direction there. Sometimes you look at something it's like, what? Okay, I'm gonna cut that down. And there we go. So now both sides of my kite are even. Like I said, if you, if you cut these pieces first, I mean, you certainly can, but every time I did that, 
I didn't have, I had trouble with it um, lining up. So, okay, and while, you know what, while we're here, I'm also going to show you how to cut the piece for the inside, okay? Take a piece of white cardstock, basic white, and I'll tell you, I, I just lined it up right on this corner. Where'd my pencil go? Here's my pencil. And just made a, a line like that on here. A little too light. And while I think about it, I want to erase my pencil marks on here too. I made them a little darker than normal. There we go, I think we're good. Okay, so I'm gonna take my scissors, and the other thing I found on this was if I, you know, I drew my, if I draw a, or cut a little bit bigger, or cut a little bit outside the lines that I drew, it helps me cut. Now there's no special measurement on this. I wanna cut just to the inside of my lines even on these two pieces. So what I, I'll tell you simply what I did was this outside brown line is where I lined it up and that's probably about, I don't know, 16th or even maybe a 32nd. It was just to take enough so it would be smaller than the card. And so this is why I liked the I like to cut this close so that I can see the line. And you'll see I'll cut right inside that line. There you go. And one more. There's no rhyme or reason. You know, you could make, line that up wherever you want. Okay. Let me get those out of my way. Let's do a dry fit, see if that works. Beautiful, look at that. See, so all I did really was trace around the outside and then just cut a real simple, you know, cut just a little bit off all the way around. Let me use my seal and I'll go ahead and ad adhere that now. Come on, let's get that started. There we go, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in now. Okay. So there's that. Now we're gonna work on the outside. You see how it even if you fold it a lot and burnish it down really well, you still it still wants to pop open. That's why that little bit of, you know what, I forgot to do something putting that down. Doggone. I used some, I think I'm gonna be okay here though. Yeah, I will. For the string on my kite, I like to put it underneath that layer. So this is the well-suited twine combo. It comes with gray. Um, what is this, granite? Um, I don't know what the two colors, it's one of the grays and then Knight of Navy. Now on this card, on the first one I did, it was the same color as the card stock, it doesn't show up as well, so I think I'm gonna use the gray this time. I think I used about six inches on my card. And it's And what I'm gonna do is put a glue dot, attach that up between those two layers with a glue dot. And I think I can still do that because I didn't get adhesive all the way down there. Come on. How often do you do that? You do something you're like, ah, forgot to, there we go. There we go. We'll fin and we'll finish on that later, but I wanted to do go back to that, do that before I forgot. And I think that's gonna show up a little bit better on the blue background. Okay, so let's talk about decorating the kite. 
Um, you're going to get two pieces of DSP. One is going to be one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths, and the other is going to be one and seven eighths by two and five eighths. So the way this is going to lay out is like this. See, but here's the deal. If you if you are going to use the two sides of, of the same piece of designer series paper, you only need to cut one set. But if you if they're gonna be different, then obviously you're gonna have to cut two sets, okay? Um, and it works best with something that's not directional. And I looked at this, but I was okay with it. You see this, the stripes are nice and centered. This, they, they look a little off because it's not a, you know, equilateral triangle. Boy, where'd I pull that word out of? That's been a long time since I've used that word, huh? So, um, you just kind of have to decide what you want. But I'm okay with that um, not being quite even like that. And these are actually just the other parts of this. So, and I just kind of want to fit it to make sure I get it put in the right place. And I think that look that's gonna look just fine placement wise here, I think. You know, you don't have to worry too much about the center because you're gonna cover that up with a sentiment. Let me pull my card in here so you can see that while I'm working with this. If anything about this card is hard, this is the hardest part. So let me put some seal on the back of this. Like I said, and this isn't even that hard. There we go. Oops. I got adhesive on my board there. I'll have to, my mat. And I saw someone who actually took a piece of coordinating cardstock and actually covered all the seams up which you could do too if need be okay so let me put these other pieces on like I said the first one's the hardest one just to make sure you get it placed right there we go I thought, you know, I was going to do one with the another one with the daisy or the pansies, but I thought let's do one for the guys. We got Father's Day coming up. This could be a gradu a great graduation card for the new grad, and that you have to get. One. Look at that. There we go. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and put my little bit of my little Velcro strips on or circles. I found these, I don't know, at the fabric store, and they're little, uh, I don't even know how big they are. They're like maybe three-eighths of an inch in diameter, and little Pete Velcros was sticky on them, and so these I actually just cut in half, because I didn't feel like I needed a whole one. The lady on the video, I thought this was a good idea, whoops, I didn't want to take those apart. But she, she used little magnets, and I was just afraid that was going to make it a little bit too heavy. I have magnets too, but... So, you know, again, it has adhesive. You just, I just keep both sides together like that, so then when I close it, it's placed perfectly. There we go. That won't pop up on me. Okay, so let's do our sentiment, and I went ahead with to to one of the world's greatest dads. So this is out of the Handsomely Suited stamp set, or suite, and there are, there are dies that uh, coordinate with this set. 
It's from the mini January to June catalog. I believe it carried over to our new catalog. Whoops, that's a little bit crooked. Let's try flipping that over. Better. Like I said, I believe it carried over. I'm almost 99% sure. Okay, where is my punch? Again, I'm using the Label Me Fancy Punch. Let me get my little handle here. You know, if you ever have a piece of paper that's too short, get yourself a post-it note, make a little handle out of it, and you can move it around so much easier. So you just kind of center it and go. There you are. Look at that. And I like to, I'm gonna punch another piece of that out, that blue another one and do the back do a background on it too so let's see let's cut this out just cut this in half let's put a little bit of adhesive there so you just split it in half and pull it apart you could if you wanted to you could all the punches are different. You have to see what works best. Sometimes you can divide it going east-west and it'll work. But this one, you know, most of the business end is um, on the east-west. So you want to cut it kind of going north-south. There we go. And I just think that that makes it, it frames it and gives it a little extra pizzazz. And let's see, let's put a couple of dimensionals on there. We're really, whoops, you know what? That's kind of crooked. It's showing, it's hanging off over there. I couldn't see it for my dark um, map, but you know what? I can just kind of undercut that off there and it's okay. I don't know where, where to go. Oh, there it is. Let's see. Did the same there. So that's a note to self. Use a lighter color. There we go. I'll just cut it out of the way. Put that right on there. That's that. You could put some gemstones on there if you wanted to. Or you know what would what's would be really cute is one of die cut. I should have done this. Die cut one of the little bow ties and put on there. Oh shoot. I should have done that. You know what? I'm going to do that. Hang tight, guys. I'm going to be right back because I want to do that. Oh, I think this is going to look cute. I'll have to put one on the other one, too, now. Let my glasses go. You know, I think I thought, how about that? Look at that. I think that's kind of cute, just putting it right on there. I'm going to use a little bit of, you know, you know what? I'm going to use a glue, glue dot instead. Less messy. I'm going to hang it like there. there. Nope, I'll put it up here instead. This is what happens when I design on the fly. I don't like it there either. Hold on. Third time's a charm. Here we go. There we go. On the red. There we are. I like that. Okay. 
sorry about that. That was my little bit of impulsivity there. But that's okay. Sometimes the best things come in when you least expect it. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of this glue. I want something top, you know, that's going to stick really well because it'll be opened and closed a lot. And this is a piece of Night and Navy cardstock. It's five and a half by four and a quarter, so it's it's card base size, okay? I'm gonna put it right on here. And there we go. Right about like that. That looks good. Okay, now I'm gonna take, you know what, I'm gonna use the gray for the ties on the um I'm gonna put about three ties, you know, to look like bows on here. They don't have to be very long. And just and the nice thing is you can slide them up and down where you want them. Yeah, the gray shows up a little better than the blue. But you know, sometimes it's a it's a trial and error. So hold on, let me do a couple more. And we will be almost done here. Come on. One more. Oops. Now, I'm pretty sure, well, actually, I know for sure that the paper is not carrying over to the new catalog, and neither is this uh, Baker's Twine. I just love Baker's Twine. So, I'm so, I was so glad to see that they had two different packages you could buy in the mini J to J mini catalog. Okay, there we go. Oh, and while I'm thinking about it, I want to, those of you who are local and, or even if you're not local, but you're partic participating in my BOGO sale, you're, you need to tell me what you're getting if you're not local and All your purchases and everything need to be completed by the by five o'clock on Sunday. Okay, so those of you that to, that don't live local that said you're going to get some things from my Bogo, I'll be in touch with you. But everybody's coming Saturday for my in-person one. So if there's something you want, you have my list. Let me know because I don't know what's going to be left come after classes on Saturday. So remember what that is, is you get, you pick out some of my retired product and then you get that much out of the new catalog for free. Essentially what you're doing is you're getting my retired stuff for free. You'll just, um, like if you pick out $40 in product for my retired stuff, then you're agreeing to buy $40 out of the new catalog and then all the retired stuff's free. So there we go. How's that? I think that looks pretty cute. So um, this was the kite fold card that again I think you could use for a variety of occasions. So thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope that um, you enjoyed tonight's card. Please share and comment that you shared, and maybe I'll be sending you this card next week, okay? Take care. Have a good week. Bye, everybody.